Hey there, today I have a different kind of tutorial for you guys. I want to show you how I edited this raw photo in Lightroom. You can also edit it in Photoshop if you have the latest camera raw installed. And I want to show you how you can turn this raw photo into something like this. It's a quite badly exposed image, but even so I could uh, manage to get to a nice result as you can see here on my website on psdbox.com you can download this raw image and you can follow the tutorial along so I hope you will like it and let's get started as I said you can use Photoshop or Lightroom to you to edit this photo I will use Lightroom but I want to show you that you can also edit this in Photoshop. So if you open this raw image, it's a .nav file. If you open it, it should by default open camera raw and you should be able to edit this. If you cannot open it in Photoshop, it's because you have to update your camera raw and uh, that way you will be able to open it. And here on the right side, you will have exactly the same modules that I have in Lightroom if you're not familiar with camera raw. Uh, this is exactly the same the modules that I have in Lightroom are in vertical, so here you have just the icons, but you will be able to, to do exactly the same thing. So I will close this and go back to Lightroom. I will uh, start working here. So this is the image that, I, that uh, we will start working with. I will reset it and we will start by working on the sky and on the ground separately because you can see that the ground and the bottom uh, half of the image is very underexposed. I actually have uh, more than one image and because I wanted to create an HDR image but I could use this one and compose it in Photoshop and mask the sky but I just want to show you how uh, you can also edit a very underexposed image like this if you shoot in RAW. If you shoot on in JPEG, you will never be able to pull out all this information and get to a result like this because you you don't have that much light information on the image. That's why it's it's a good idea to shoot in RAW. Okay, so I want to show you how you can recover an image like this. Uh, it's a quite badly exposed image, as I said. It's exposed for the sky and the ground is underexposed. So let's start by adding some light on the ground so we will select the gradient tool and we will start creating a gradient from here and we'll create a transition like this something like that I will leave it there and I'll give you the values that I have here so I have an exposure of um, 2.05 so two stops of light we added and a contrast of minus 11 and the shadows I set this to 23 and we uh, right away recovered a uh, big, big part of the uh, well uh, we recovered the light here on the ground part let's so let's just move this and make sure that everything is okay great now the next thing that we're going to do is work on the sky so I'll create another gradient from the same spot dragging down this time like so but I'll put it right here and the settings that I have for the sky gradient is contrast minus 11 highlights to minus 55 this is to recover all the information on the and the details here on the brightest highlights shadows to 49 and clarity 42 and then I also increased the saturation to add more color on the sky. I increased it to 46. And that's the basic uh, edits that I made so uh, that I have the image more uniform in terms of color and contrast. And now we're starting to make the general adjustments. I did not change the temperature or the tint of the photo. I'll, also, I didn't change the exposure and the contrast because that's why we worked separately on the uh, on the sky and on the ground and the only thing that I changed is the clarity which I set it to 7 and then the vibrance to 30 to add more color and then I scroll down I did not use the tone curve because as I said the, ex the 
the exposure is okay. So I went to the HSL module and I did not change the hue. The hue is used to change the color, how, the, how each of these colors look like. For example, the greens, you could make them look more brown, but uh, or the this, uh, oranges make them look more more red and things like that. But I'm not going to change the hue, so I'll leave everything to the default. What I will change though is the saturation. And here I change the saturation for the for the oranges. So I set this to 27 to add more saturation here on the oranges and also on the yellows. And I set the yellows to 51. You can see how now it looks more saturated. And then I went to the luminance tab. And here I changed the aqua to minus 31 and the blues to minus 17. This is just to darken the blues and create more contrast on the sky. Okay, and next we're going to go into the split tone and here I have the hue on the highlights. I have it to 51 and the saturation to 26. And on the shadows I have a hue, the hue set to 246 and the saturation to 16. If this is too much for you, for your taste, um, what you could do is change the balance and set it to have more, more towards the warm, towards the highlight, or simply reduce the saturation on the shadows a bit and uh, get the effect that you want. On the sharpening, I want to sharpen this a bit more. You can see that we have quite a lot of noise, especially on the on the shadows, and that's because the photo was underexposed and we. Um, increase the, the light so much so that's why the noise is more visible we can use the reduce noise a bit and we will get rid of some of that noise also keep in mind that this is a quite big image it's 6000 pixels so in width and if you want to put it online or something like that you will obviously make it a lot smaller and when you reduce the size the noise will tend to disappear quite a lot and that's that's all that I did to this image. Uh, I also added a vignette effect, but that's up to your taste. I have the amount set to minus 26 and the midpoint to 12 and the roundness to 84. And if it's too much, which uh, it is, I will decrease a bit the amount and increase the feather so that the effect is less, it's less visible. And that's it. That's how I edited this raw photo. There's nothing, there's nothing more that I did to this image. Obviously, you could go ahead and uh, work in Photoshop if you want. You can right-click and choose Edit in Photoshop. And if you have plugins to reduce noise or to increase sharpness or to add who knows what effects you may like, you can do that. But uh, this is how I um, edited this raw image. So I hope you liked it and. From now on, if you have a camera that supports RAW formats, switch from JPEG to RAW and you'll have a lot more room to play when you edit your photos. So that's all for today, uh, see you on the next tutorial.